Alexa, turn on hallway light. Oh yeah. Okay, Google, turn off hallway light. Okay, turning off hallway light. Isn't that pretty cool? Welcome back to Maker It Play. In this video, I'm going to walk through all the components that it took to turn that light on and off by voice command. Hey there. First, let me thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate that. Me and this guy had a conversation about eye contact with the camera, and we promised to do better in future videos, but neither of us wanted to re-record this video, so we really appreciate you having patience with us. Thanks, and appreciate you watching. This will be more of a high-level walkthrough, as I plan to create separate videos to go into more detail on some of the components. I'm going to start at the light switch and work my way back to the Amazon Echo and Google Home to show all the components that allow me to control the light switch. As you will see, hooking up the Amazon Echo takes less work than the Google Home. For this project, I chose to build a mechanical device that fits over the light switch and simulates a person physically turning on or off the switch. This had a couple of benefits. One, I didn't have to open the light switch and change any wiring. Not that I don't mind doing that, and I will in future projects, but for this project, I wanted to keep it simple and not alter the wiring for the light. And two, I can still use the physical light switch to control the light, so if for some reason the controller for this light goes down, for instance, there's no network for Amazon or Google, my light still works. For the mechanical part, I'm using a servo motor connected to an Arduino Pro Mini. To mount the servo to the switch, I used Fusion 360 to create a bracket. I didn't want to alter the light switch cover in any way, so I started by designing a plate that can be screwed over the light switch cover using the same screws and screw holes that hold on the light switch cover. Then I designed a second plate that has a cutout to hold the servo. This plate is glued at a 90 degree angle to the first plate. Finally, I designed a piece that is mounted to the servo shaft that acts as a toggle that physically rocks the light switch back and forth to turn on or off the light. I cut these three pieces from two millimeter plastic sheets on my CNC. Now that I had a solid bracket to hold the servo in the correct place over the switch, I wrote some code for the Arduino to control the servo. The code to control the servo is pretty basic. I used the Arduino servo library. The servo is hooked up to ground and 5 volts, and the signal line is attached to pin 8 of the Arduino. I set the servo angle to 90 degrees as this puts the toggle bar parallel to the light switch. The toggle up function will move the servo to 105 degrees for 200 milliseconds and then back to 90 degrees. The toggle down function will move the servo to 70 degrees for 200 milliseconds and then back to rest at 90 degrees. I built this switch to control a hallway light in my house. This light has a switch at each end of the hallway wired as a three-way switch. With this setup, there is no feedback for Arduino to know if the light is on or off, so all I can really do is toggle the switch. I wrote the code to handle commands for toggle up, toggle down, and toggle state. The toggle state will alter between up and down with each call. The real magic of this switch comes with how it wirelessly receives commands. I am using the MySensors library to provide the wireless communications. You can check out the MySensors library at mysensors.org website. I'll put a link to their webpage in the description below. MySensors is an open source hardware and software community focusing on do-it-yourself home automation and Internet of Things. MySensors allows you to create your own original sensors and actuators based on components like Arduino, ESP32, Node MCU, Raspberry Pi, and the NRF24L01 transceiver, which is a single board that provides 2.4 gigahertz radio communications. By attaching an NRF24L01 transceiver to the Arduino, it can receive commands wirelessly from a gateway with a matching transceiver. MySensors defines a protocol for sending messages between the gateway and the sensor node. I plan to make a video that goes into more detail on MySensors so look for that video soon. Our next device in the chain between our light and the smart speaker is the MySensor gateway. I am using the ESP32 Node MCU as MySensor's gateway. The ESP32 has built-in Wi-Fi, but needs to have an NRF24L01 transceiver wired to it. This allows the ESP32 to act as a gateway between Wi-Fi and all the nodes with the NRF24L0 transceivers. For this project, I use the Gateway ESP32 MQTT client sample app provided with the MySensors Arduino library. The only thing I had to change before compiling and loading the code onto the Node MCU was to fill in my Wi-Fi info and MQTTB server info. This client automatically publishes any data it receives from the sensors nodes via the transceivers to the MQTT topic that matches the node and sensor ID. It also subscribes to all MQTT topics with the provided prefix and will transmit the data via the transceivers to the given node and sensor IDs for the topic. 
Look for a future video that will go into deeper detail on my center's gateway and MQTT setup. Make sure and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss that video. Next is the MQTT server on our journey from the light switch to the smart speakers. I am using Mosquito, which is an open source message broker that implements the MQTT protocol. The MQTT protocol provides a lightweight method of carrying out messages using a publish subscribe model. This makes it suitable for Internet of Things messages, such as with low power sensors or mobile devices, such as phones, embedded computers, or microcontrollers. The MQTT broker is running on a Raspberry Pi 3 as part of my Home Assistant setup. Home Assistant is an open source home automation software designed to run on a Raspberry Pi or local server in your home. Home Assistant has a built-in add-on page that makes it super easy to install add-ons to your Home Assistant instance. Mosquito MQTT broker is one of those add-ons that you can install. You can configure Home Assistant UI to have a button that will place a message into the correct MQTT topic to turn that light on or off when you press it. This provides an alternate method to control the light in addition to the Echo and Google Home. But this isn't the path the Echo and Google Home take to control the light. Instead, I need another path to link the smart speakers to the MQTT broker. For this task, I am using Node-RED. Node-RED is a programmable tool for wiring together hardware devices, APIs, and online services in new and interesting ways. Node-RED provides a browser-based flow editor that makes it easy to wire together flows using the wide range of nodes in the palette. It has built-in nodes for publishing to MQTT topics, as well as nodes for listening to HTTP posts. You can add to the Node-RED's palette by installing third-party nodes. The Node-RED Contrib Alexa Local NPM package is a great add-on to Node-RED that allows Amazon Echo to connect directly to your Node-RED instance on your local network. This greatly simplifies using Amazon Echo to control devices on your network compared to what you have to do for Google Home. The Alexa Local Node is a dead simple node for adding Alexa compatibility to your Node-RED flow. No Alexa skills required, no account linking is required, no complicated parameters. It just works as long as you have the right Echo device as I learned the hard way. This works great with Echo.Gen2 devices, but not the Echo Show. This node works by emulating a Philips Hue bridge and device within your local network. Amazon Echo is hard-coded to support discovering the Philips Hue device on the local network without having to link a cloud account. Once it discovers the device, it can send on, off, and dimming commands to the device. To use this node, you drag it onto your node red flow and give it a unique device name. This name is what you will say to the Echo when you want to control the device. In my case, I called it Hallway Light. Then publish your flow. Now ask Alexa to discover devices. If she is playing nice today, she will quickly find the device or the node you just added to node red. Once that is done, now you can say Alexa, turn on hallway light and Amazon will connect to your node in node red and trigger your flow. Next, we complete our flow by connecting the Alexa local node to MQTT node. We route this connection through a change node that allows us to set the payload in the topic that we want to publish to an MQTT broker. At this point, we now have Amazon Echo connected to our light switch. But to also get Google Home to connect to the light switch, we have a few more steps. Unfortunately, Google Home doesn't have a way to discover and connect to devices directly on your local network. At least no way that I've found so far. If you have found a way, please leave a comment below to clue me in on how to do this. Google is nice enough though to provide a way for makers to control things via Google Home or more accurately via Google Assistant. They provide this through integration with If This Then That web service. If This Then That is a free platform that helps you do more with your apps and devices by allowing you to connect different things through what they call applets. An applet has the format of this trigger happens then that action should be taken. In my case, I create an app that uses the if you say trigger from Google Assistant service that then performs make a web request action of the webhook service. This is really easy and straightforward to set up and if this then that. But the challenge comes with the fact that I want the webhook to call a URL hosted by Node-RED instance on my local home network. To make this work, a few more things have to be set up. First, I have to set up DuckDNS so that I can have a URL to place in the webhook service that will resolve to my public IP. Since I am not paying my ISP to provide me a static IP, I have to use a free service like DuckDNS to track my current public IP address and map it to a static URL. Home Assistant has an add-on for DuckDNS that reports your IP to DuckDNS on a fixed time interval in order to maintain the valid mapping between your URL and public IP. Now that I have a way to tell if this then that webhook service what IP to call to reach my Node-RED server, I still have to allow this traffic into my network. To make this happen, I had to set up a port forwarding rule in my router that would forward inbound requests to a given port address onto my Raspberry Pi inside my network that is running Node-RED. In my case, I actually had to do this twice as I have the router provided by my ISP and then a second Google Wi-Fi router 
before getting to the Raspberry Pi. And that completes the path between my DIY light switch and both Amazon Echo and the Google Home Smart Speaker. I hope you found this project interesting and useful. Look for future videos where I go into more detail on some of these components. Thanks and see you in the next video. Now you can say Alexa, turn on hallway light and Amazon Echo will connect to your node in the node red. And say this line. Once that is done. Just turn off the light. No, oh, the back one heard me, huh? I've got these muted. <laughs> Alexa, turn on hallway light.